Live with the most powerful name in local news. This is Fox 6 News at 9. Good evening. I'm Tiffany Bittner. And I'm Steve Crocker. Thanks for being with us tonight. Our top story, five Birmingham police officers fired for what Chief A.C. Roper calls, quote, a shameful act. Unquote. The officers were seen on videotape beating a suspect who was already unconscious. We must warn you that the video we're about to show you is graphic. The incident occurred in January of last year after a high-speed chase lasted more than 20 minutes. The suspect, Anthony Warren, was ejected from the vehicle and later beaten by five Birmingham police officers. Warren was being chased on suspicion of dealing drugs. Chief A.C. Roper, who claims he was never told of the beating, says actions like this will not be tolerated. Birmingham Mayor Larry Langford agrees. But we have come so far that police brutality and police misconduct will not be tolerated. Now, the city of Birmingham has denied the claim to settle with Anthony Warren, who is still in jail for attempted murder after police say he struck another officer with his car during the chase. Meanwhile, Anthony Warren's attorney is alleging police tried to cover up the beating by providing an edited version of the chase without the alleged beating. Fox 6 News reporter Jonathan Hardison spoke with the local law enforcement training program today to find out about how officers are trained in the use of force. And Jonathan, what are they saying is acceptable? Well, Steve, that question is answered for every local law enforcement officer during some extensive use of force training they undergo during their weeks in the police or sheriff's academy. But the effectiveness of that training may never really be tested until they find themselves in the middle of a high-speed chase like this one. Chasing a suspect who you've just seen run down a fellow officer can get the adrenaline pumping and emotions running high, in some cases, too high. Kicking and punching an unconscious man in the head is absolutely horrific. It's absolutely inexcusable. The only thing that may keep those emotions from boiling over at the wrong time is years of experience and training to keep calm. Our instructors are always very careful to emphasize using as little force as possible to protect the public and to protect themselves. We understand that uh, often those police officers are placed in the positions that are very emotional and highly charged, but they, of all people, have to keep control, keep control of the situation, and not go overboard. Many of Virginia College's law enforcement program graduates will end up in private security or working for prisons, but the program's administrators say those jobs require the same kind of calm and snap judgment as required of officers in a chase like this one. And that's why they screen applicants to their program even before they begin training for a law enforcement career. Some people are better suited for it than others, and we try to screen applicants even to our criminal justice program to make sure they're the right sort of uh, personality and have the right skill set that uh, is going to enable them to do the right thing at the, the worst possible time. We send them out to do a tough job, but it's important for them and for us that they behave with ethical standards and do the best they can. And in this incident, that was not our best work. Now, Anthony Warren's attorney says as disturbing as the images in that video are, she believes what's more disturbing is what she's calling a cover-up effort by some officers to hide parts of the original tape. She says that behavior must also be addressed moving forward. Live in Birmingham, Jonathan Hardison, Fox 6 News. Thanks, Jonathan. In tonight's MyFoxAL.com web poll, we're asking what your thoughts are after seeing the police beating video. Are you surprised? Did you expect it? Do you agree with the, the uh, firings? And should supervisors be held accountable or something else? You can vote and blog your responses at MyFoxAL.com. Our top story, the attorney for all five police officers fired for the way they treated the suspect says they did nothing wrong. Gail Gears says the officers followed proper training when they captured Anthony Warren after a chase. She says they considered Warren a serious threat and they did not know that he was unconscious. The attorney says her clients should never have been fired. They are not guilty. We will not concede guilt. The city may. We will not. And if the city concedes guilt, then the citizens of Birmingham ought to be very alarmed. It is their money. Gear says that the officers are appealing to the Jefferson County Personnel Board, hoping to get their jobs back. The incident is getting national attention with the tape being shown all across the country. Fox 6 News reporter Jonathan Hardison looks at how much of a beating the city's image could take. 
The Vulcan statue may be a good metaphor for the image Birmingham wants to project, proud of its past, but also refurbished for a new future. The same could also be said of the city's perception of its civil rights history. But some journalists we spoke to say the tape of this alleged police beating may make it harder to get that message across. The culture of the past was that police brutality was acceptable. In Birmingham, Alabama, in the present day, it is not acceptable. Mayor Langford's first public comments after the tape was released were full of references to how far he thinks the city has come from its past. But some are concerned this tape may be added to the mental images brought to mind when people living outside Alabama hear the city's name. But certainly, I mean, that, that is the perception. When I, when I tell folks, you know, that I'm in Birmingham, the first thing that, that they talk about is civil rights. They talk about police brutality. They talk about these kinds of things. You know, and then you say, well, yeah, that was, a, that was a point in our history. We've overcome that. You ought to see Birmingham now. On the Birmingham Business Journal report on MyFoxAL.com Thursday, journalist Craig I and Cindy Crawford said this could create hurdles for positive publicity, but gave Mayor Langford credit for his handling of the tape fallout so far. Birmingham has to work uh, twice as hard, you know, on these kinds of issues, um, and, we, and, and a reaction has to be, um, you know, has to be also very sharp on something like this. And, and so it's like we're making headway to say we recognize that this happened in our area, and in some ways we were on the forefront of repairing civil rights, and so it is appropriate at this point to say. Uh, it wasn't fair to treat people that way back then, and it isn't that way now. We asked the Chamber of Commerce for their reaction to this tape, but Chamber representatives said they had no comment tonight. In Birmingham, Jonathan Hardison, Fox 6 News. Thank you, Jonathan. New tonight.